good morning everybody and <clears throat> welcome to the presentation uh, on the hyperinflation world uh, world bank notes uh, i would firstly like to thank the hobby club to give me an opportunity to uh, speak uh, on this topic which is uh, one of the hobbies which i have and uh, <clears throat> i am basically a collector and on this subject of hyperinflation world bank notes i have learned a lot during the process of collection uh, during this presentation today i will try to give you as much information as possible on this particular collections and how i have gone about the collection uh, uh, there could be a few errors which perhaps may happen during the whole process uh, and i would expect uh, some of the experts which are logged in to guide me on certain of the errors which i do so that i can improve and make my uh, data more accurate for the future I will now start the presentation. As you can see, hyperinflation leads to a lot of zeros. Uh, basically, I have started the collections of uh, paper money or what is known as a subject known as numismatic uh, sometime in 2013 and uh, since then I have been gradually been doing various topics uh, basically I started with the uh, Indian notes uh, initially with the Republic notes, which is means the notes which are printed after the independence and then shifted on to also the British India, which is prior to independence and the private banks, which are uh, sometimes in the pre-1900 period. Uh, sometime in 2015-16, I started diverting to uh, doing the World Bank notes and the various topics which I do at present is uh, hyperinflation notes on which I would be talking today. Uh, I also do overprint notes, which means a note on which the there is a subsequent printing from the original. Then there are odd denomination notes, which I do means, you know, have various uh, uh, non-standard numbers like 21, 4, 6, which are not a standard denomination number printed uh, all around the world. Also, I do banknotes on, on coins on odd materials like silk, leather, uh, socials, uh, silk, linen. Uh, then the next topic I do is uncut sheets means before the sheets before the notes are cut from it uh, they have been sold by many countries which allows collectors like us to collect those notes and also I do the pre 1900s and the private bank notes from all around the world uh, which it also includes a lot of Indian bank notes in that Uh, way back in 2015, uh, you know, I saw a Zimbabwe note with a lot of zeros on it, which gave me an inclination that why not I start a collection of this uh, because it has, uh, you know, a different uh, feeling which it gives to a collector. Uh, I have these collections on a criterion which is every banknote with a denomination of 50,000 and above is what I collect in this particular collection. Uh, the uh, Over the years uh, I have collected, uh, I initially thought there would be about 100, 200 uh, banknotes to complete this collection but 
as i started going further it turned out to be a deep sea of water where i cannot see an end and uh, of course i can move on all sides but i have reached a figure already of 3000 plus in this particular collection and still i feel there is a very long way to still go to finish this uh, collection these notes are from about 50 plus countries from around the world the maximum is of course from uh, germany where the maximum number of hyperinflation notes or high denomination notes have been printed uh i buy these notes basically from exhibitions or from uh, dealers uh one of the big benefits which i find by uh doing these collections is uh you will tend to learn a lot about uh the history around the world history about print uh, how the notes were printed how uh, people use it how the uh, economy has moved over the period of time it also allows me to meet a lot of people from around the different walks from around the world uh in this presentation there are a lot of uh, bank notes which will be shown to you uh, either uh, on the screen or on the presentation uh, i would like to inform you that all these notes are from my collection they are not downloaded pictures except one note at the end which i will uh, uh, mention it to you at the end uh during this process i have uh, had a lot of displays or a presentation in different exhibitions uh some of them you could see uh here uh is basically is to and ensure that non collectors or different theme collectors could see these themes uh could get some information from this could also gain certain knowledge that is what the main interest for uh doing these exhibitions during this process you also meet a lot of collectors uh also i have been awarded uh, a few uh, uh, awards from different institutes in recognition of my collection as well as the contribution which i have done towards the uh, numismatic hobby especially in india i also have conducted certain seminars uh, at certain locations and forums wherein i try to impart certain information about my collection and the numismatic hobby to different uh, collectors as well as non collectors uh, also it gave me an encouragement and i printed a small book on the hyperinflation bank notes uh the complete uh, set of the books which were printed have been sold out and there were few of them which were also sold through amazon now i would start the presentation on the hyperinflation uh, 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 collection which i have before we start and i start showing you the bank notes and explain you directly on the bank notes it is very important that we should or you should know little about the various uh, what i would say uh, subjects as well as the situations whereby you will get a better feel of the bank notes of course these are words which is inflation and hyperinflation known to everybody and very important factors for knowing the e economy and to evaluate the economy of any country inflation is basically the increase of the goods and services and which also eventually decreases the spending value of the money which you have now when these inflation gets into an extreme situation 
that is what is known as hyperinflation uh, to be more specific and more define the exact uh, differentiation when it becomes hyperinflation it was been uh, standardized that if there is an inflation of more than 50% in a particular month for a month then it would be termed as an hyperinflation situation what would eventually have effect from an hyperinflation the valuation of the money will sink once the valuation of the money will sink the money starts getting used not only as money but various other ways like you can see here it's used to make a dress here kids are playing as toys making kites they are used as a burning material for cooking so basically it shows that the money has absolutely lost its value okay before i continue there is one request which we have uh, you may have a few questions to ask during this presentation um, after the presentation we would have a question answer uh, session and for which you will need to type the questions in the uh, uh, you have the uh, live comments section you can type the question there and upload and i will try to answer as many questions as possible if i can't i'll try to give you an answer at a little later time there are other difficulties which you will have uh, during the inflation period and especially in the hyperinflation period one of the important thing is you will need a larger purse and maybe you will need wheels with it because you can't carry it otherwise uh, why does the hyperinflation situation come uh, either a war or economic uh, mismanagement or a calamity or uh, you know a major epidemic which happens in a particular country or in a region leads to a bad economic situation within the country during that period the government tends to start printing more money without a backup of the wealth especially in terms of gold and starts printing and circulating these notes into the uh, market now when these large amount of notes starts moving into the market there is a big devaluation of the note why because the wealth has not increased only the representing material that is the money has increased like you see in the pie chart the uh, the wealth is the same before the split and during the split so now if you print more notes each note valuation or the backup wealth to it is reduced uh if put it in uh, a layman's words is if a father has a particular amount of wealth if he is giving it to one son he gets 100% of it if it's split between two sons each gets 50% so basically you see that the value which a person gets is much less that is what this would mean when the government issues more bank notes without increasing the wealth at their end now once the larger notes moves into the market there tends to be increase in prices also as that goes up more valuation is required so the government issues banknotes with much higher denomination once the larger denomination banknotes are issued the lower denomination notes starts losing its worth or its use uh, also what happens is the product or the goods starts having a more importance than the money so 
there is a tendency for people to start hoarding and also start buying goods which even they don't require but to start storing that into their houses and their offices and they could be used as a barter at a later date so the goods demand starts going up so the prices again starts going up so this is like a snowball effect and it starts multiplying into a la much larger uh, values also the due to the uh, hyperinflation the exchange in the foreign exchange markets the the valuation of the currency will drop the importers will not be getting into business because they can't afford it any more to import several companies will start stopping and the retrenchment of workers will start so that is under the process which starts during an hyperinflation process some of the countries where the hyperinflation occurred at a particular time uh, has been germany hungary zimbabwe recently you uh, also it has happened in various countries these are some of the highest hyperinflation rates which has ever happened which you could see uh, <coughs> here if you see these are daily inflation rates at a particular time which has happened which you could see here it's almost 200% per day is the inflation which happened in hungary in july 46 Uh, how does the hyperinflation ends when the hyperinflation ends with a new currency being issued with a much smaller denomination uh, wherein they may change the name of the currency they will change the denominations of the currency uh, for which they will issue either new uh, new bank notes or they will use the older notes with some overprinting on it if new notes and a new uh, term name of the currency is issued then perhaps the older notes during the hyperinflation period which were issued will become obsolete i will now give you a little explanation about the hyperinflation which had happened in three different countries uh, one of them is uh, germany uh germany during the first world war uh started having problems from 1914 and they started issuing bank notes much more than the gold reserves which they had and also did heavy borrowing during the war in 1919 they lost the war even then the economy was a little stable between 1919 to 1921 even though the prices had already doubled during this period but after 19 1922 the hyperinflation period uh, sank in and in 1923 was the peak time when the hyperinflation came in if you see here on the slide the rate of a bread loaf in berlin <coughs> during various times in 1918 it was just half a mark and by the time it reached the peak hyperinflation period which was in november 1923 it reached a figure of 201 billion marks uh these are the different uh, terminologies used on the currencies by the german government uh, uh if you'll see the bank notes later you'll see but the million and million in would mean millions millionaire and million den would mean billions billion and billion in would mean a trillion now coming to uh, hungary 
Hungary had one of the worst inflation periods you would see, which was after the World War II. You see the inflation rate, which has reached, hard to speak it out, but it's a huge percentage of inflation, which it had reached. Uh, it stopped in 1946 when they issued a new currency by the name foreign and one foreign was equivalent to 400 octillion pango which is 10 raised to 27. Uh, Hungary has the highest denomination banknotes in the world. Uh, when the foreign were issued you had to go and exchange the old banknotes with the foreign but when it was smaller denomination notes it was very difficult for the normal public to go to the banks to go and change so they literally threw this uh, currency on the roads and in the trash and you could see here in the picture that the currency has been been getting swept on the roads which were thrown by the public Uh, the uh, levels rose very high and in July 1946, the inflation rates reached a level of a height where it, every 15 hours the prices were doubled. It, there were cases where you have ordered a cup of coffee and by the time you get the coffee, the prices have increased. Now coming to Zimbabwe, which is a more recent uh, uh, situation where you had an hyperinflation. This was more due to the Congo war, which disturbed the economy of the country. Even here you see the annual inflation rate of Zimbabwe. It was an astronomical figure. Uh, Zimbabwe has the a banknote which shows the maximum number of zeros on a banknote. The Hungary has the higher denomination notes, but those notes do not have the numerical figures shown onto the banknotes. Uh, Zimbabwe finally closed the uh, hyperinflation period by terminating their uh, currency and started using the foreign currencies uh, in a local manner and at a later date introduced a new series of uh, uh, Zimbabwe dollars which replaced the hyperinflation uh, currencies. Now, there were questions uh, asked many times that when you come to hyperinflation uh, banknotes, uh, they are countries today where there is no hyperinflation, but they still have high denomination banknotes. Now, the question in this is uh, that it may happen that the hyperinflation may have set in earlier. That is where the currency notes has become introduced of a higher denomination. Let us take an example of Indonesia. In September 1998, the inflation reached a level of 82.4%, which means it reached, it crossed the threshold of 50%, which, which introduces a hyperinflation situation in that particular country at that particular period. Because of this situation, the rupiah 100,000 was introduced in November 1999 by the government, which at that particular time was equivalent to only US dollar 10. Now, because it was introduced at that particular time, and even today you have the 100,000 rupee, rupiah notes, which has been used in Indonesia. So even these notes are now termed as the hyperinflation bank notes, even though there is no hyperinflation situation in that country at present. Uh, 
i'll give you a few examples which ha happens during the hyperinflation period which has been you know in history has been narrated and spoken down uh, there had been a situation where two women were carrying a uh, bank notes in their laundry baskets to do go for shopping uh, at a particular window shop they were trying to see certain uh, uh, products which were being displayed and they kept the basket down on the floor after a few minutes when they tried to pick up their baskets again they saw their baskets had vanished somebody had taken away the baskets but they had not taken the currency they kept the currency on the floor and they just took the baskets which shows the value of the baskets or the importance of the baskets for the theft was more than the money which was kept inside the baskets uh, also because the inflation rates were very high the factories used to pay salary to the workers on a daily basis and that also in the morning itself so that during the lunch time they could go and buy whatever they want because till the end of the day the prices will again go up so to avoid that they try to go during the lunch time to buy the goods these were some of the difficulties and situations which people face during the hyperinflation periods now i would come to the actual bank notes which i collect and which is something of more interest to all of you these are the two highest denomination bank notes ever issued in the world uh the uh, one is the uh 10 raised to 19 Uh, pangos which is issued by hungary this was a bank note which was issued or it was circulated into the market and the public used it the second note which is there on the slide is 10 raised to 20 which is the actually highest denomination note ever printed in the world this was uncirculated bank note which means it was printed but it was not issued to the public for the general use the reason for that was when it was printed and it was ready to be issued the government decided to end the hyperinflation by issuing a new currency which was foreign and so this notes were not issued but were printed so technically they are the highest denomination notes but they were not there into the circulation these are also some of the highest notes uh, the zimbabwe note as i mentioned earlier this is 100 100 trillion dollars which has the highest denominations of zero been shown on the bank notes the romanian note which has been shown here of 1 million is the highest denomination note in uh, on polymers these are some of the german billion marks notes uh, of course they were introduced a little late but these are a more exclusive range of the bank notes which a collector would be more than interested to have them in their collection uh in germany every city every town every municipal corporations started issuing bank notes because of the war and the hyperinflation circulation situation they could not get paper moved all, all across the country so the each city and each town started issuing their own bank notes these are some other german notes which you could see uh the one here you could see is is cut in a particular manner 
which means this note has got back to the bank and it has been cancelled. So each bank or each country has different ways how they cancel a note which comes back to them. You can see here you have million nan, million dad used. So as I explained to you earlier, these are the different terminologies used in Germany for the various uh, denomination which they want to. These are some other countries where you have higher denomination notes. Uh, Yugoslavia, Turkey, you have South Korea, Russia, Iran, uh, these are Greece. On here you can see they have only mentioned 2010. 10 means it's 10 billion and uh, 2000 is two, uh, 2000 million. You have Uganda having 50,000 denomination. Now, which would be also of more interest to you is some of the unusual hyperinflation banknotes. The overprint, which I mentioned to you earlier. Now, there are two situations in an overprint. One is you have an existing banknote and the hyperinflation has moved in and you have less time to print a completely new note. So they will take an existing note on that particular note, they will print a higher denomination. For example, here in Nicaragua, a 20 uh, has been overprint by 500,000. In Germany, the 5 mark has been overprinted by 50,000. A 50,000 note has been overprinted by 5 million. Then the other overprint which happens is you have a hyperinflation situation and you have moved out of it now. So again, you do not have time to print new notes. So what would you do on the existing note of a higher denomination? You will overprint it with a much lower value and the note will now be used for a much lower value like you see here. 50,000 has been converted to 1, 50, 500,000 has been converted to 500, 50,000 has been converted to 50 by different countries. You have Argentina, you have Brazil. So there are so many countries who has done this processes. Or denomination notes. You see 75 million. You find 300 million, which are not or normal denomination currencies which you would normally find. Here you see what is known as a very odd uh, type of a currency which is known as an hell notes. These are basically used in China uh, where they have that when they are a person has expired and when they are criminating him they use this money to be put into the fire so that this money can be used by the deceased in his afterlife. So these are hell monies which are put into the fire at that particular time. Here you could find you have here a high denomination note an uncut sheet of two notes. Here you have a typed uh, banknote issued by a municipal corporation of a particular city uh, and it is hand signed note on a hard, hard paper. Here you could find a very very different type of a banknote. These are both German banknotes. One is typed signed and sealed. The second one is a completely handwritten banknote 
only the serial number is embossed and a rubber stamp being put onto the banknote. These are valid currency which were used during these periods. These are just not collector's items, but they were actually in circulation. Odd materials. It is typed on a foil. It is typed, it is printed on a thick paper. This is all because when it is locally printed in a particular city or a town, you start using material which is available in that particular town. These are on linen. You also have notes on silk. You have on jute. These are some of the hyperinflation coins which were issued during these times. Turkey and Germany. Here is something which is very exceptional. When there is an hyperinflation situation, even the stamps has to be of a higher denomination. Here you find a German, uh, an envelope actually being posted with German stamps. You have something like about 20 stamps. Each stamp is 5 million marks. So this particular envelope has stamps of equivalent value of 100 million marks. Another envelope. These are of Hungarian pangos. These are eight stamps on it. Total of, they are six stamps of 3,000 million each and two stamps of 1,000 million each. So total comes to 20,000 million, which is about a 20 billion pangos stamps put onto this particular envelope. These are other items. This is a check used in Nigeria, uh, sorry, Zimbabwe. This is equivalent. The figure mentioned is $900 trillion. This is one of the highest denomination bank uh, checks which I have come across. You also see some currency straps which are used like you have a bundle of notes and you put a strap around it, a paper strap. This is there. You could see the high denomination uh, values on it. This is a banknote which is not in my collection. And it may not be in most of the people's collection. These are very special banknotes which are issued by the Bank of England, which is known as Titan. And there is in the series another banknote which is known as a giant, which is Giant is 1 million a pound note and the Titan here is a 100 million pound note. They are totally about 4,000 of such notes which are basically kept in their lockers. They are not to be used as circulation. They are basically to be used as a vital role for backing the notes issued by commercial banks in Scotland and Northern Ireland. These are a large di dimensional notes uh, equivalent to, you know, the note which was issued by Philippines as a commemorative note, which also I have in this collection, which I will show you now that particular note. Just a minute, I'll show you the note. This is a note which is issued by Philippines as a commemorative note and the giant and the Titan is also equivalent to this note. There are some more notes which I would like to show you. Uh, this is a 500,000 kroner note from Austria. I also 
one would not know that even china had a situation where they had to issue very high denomination uh, notes these are some of the high denomination notes which you would uh, you can see here sorry there is some reflection which comes this is 600 million yuan note this is a 500000 bank note of china there are some notes which are of a higher bigger dimensions also not as big as the ones issued by philippines these were the philippine note which i showed you they were not circulated note these are some high dimensional notes this is a 5 million ruble note issued in russia this was in circulation and used these were used in uh, romania all the 5 million you can see the high quality printing which were done even in those days even in those extreme situation of hyperinflation this is another romanian note which is of 100000 also you would see there would be times where people has issued this is a 500000 500000 note you see the size so you would have different dimension notes some would be large some would be small this is another note this is from belarus a 5 million note here you see these are put into plastics with a number here it is 68 these are done by a grading company they give a particular grade to the quality of the note which is there the highest grade which is possible is 70 okay uh uh this ends my presentation uh to you i would now be ready with whatever questions you have uh, uh i'm sure that some people may have put up some questions i will take one by one and try to answer uh manoj thank you for your question uh which is the first hyperinflation note unfortunately i have not put them into year wise but i presume what i would have in my collection would be some something from germany uh, i will have to actually see the actual value and i can get back to you uh it could i india i don't think may go into this situation but it's something which it's difficult for me to give you an answer mr modi uh i have been collecting the hyperinflation notes from 2015 uh but the numismatics from 2013 up to the government to and i think with the printing of the while we can go then delay it um it is a situation till they don't get to the right situation of solving the problem they will have to continue that situation they have to have some outlet somewhere to try to control it uh but uh meridian is equivalent to a million this is also equivalent to a million uh they are would be 100% various other collectors uh there are few which i am in touch but not too many of them who collects in this particular manner there are people everybody may have 
some note, some note or the other in their collection. But collecting this as an hyperinflation theme, I am quite sure there are very few of them. And of course, there are times when I have interacted with them and exchange also with them. Minas, yes, I have thought about it and I am trying to see how best I can do it to ensure it. At present, there is no hyperinflation notes in India because what I collect is from 50,000 denomination onwards and the highest note ever printed in India is 10,000. Uh, it was sold on Amazon, but it's no more sold uh, on Amazon at present. Uh, at present, I have run short of all the book stock which I have, and I have not yet taken up the process of printing it again. Uh, it's a. I have taken up this hobby. It's a very long process, and I think I will tell you on when I meet you in person. Uh, I'm not sure with there's any banknotes with an Hitler's picture. I need to uh, make, do a study and try to find that out. Uh, it's very difficult to say. They may, they may not go. But there is good possibility that at least some may go. When you are into a hobby, it's like an intoxication. So you'll always try to find that little time somewhere or the other to do it. Of course, there is not too much time which I'm able to spare. Fortunately, the lockdown did give me a lot of time which I could spend on the hobby. No plans to open a museum. Yes, you are correct. Uh, I am not aware why different terminologies were used. Maybe because of different cities, different towns used it in a different manner. Uh, I have about over 3,000 banknotes in this collection. Uh, some of my favorite notes is already put into the pictures here. They are from Hungary. They are few from Germany. Uh, the Austrian note which I showed you and the Chinese notes which I showed you. These notes are not exchangeable with the government because these are all demonetized. So, yes, it could be exchanged with different collectors. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I started the collection, there were about 100 odd, which I thought they are. Uh, but I have already crossed 3000 and I'm quite sure that the figure would be more than 10,000. But there is no proper record which is available for it. It would be there on the THC uh, channel on the YouTube, which you could, uh, we could perhaps send you the link later on, and you could, uh, uh, Download or see it over there in future. Uh, I have done maybe about five or so, five or six exhibitions. Uh, I do collect other other notes also, which I had mentioned during my presentation earlier. 
uh, I do into overprints, odd materials, odd denominations. I have completed the complete Indian banknotes on a prefix wise. Uh, I also do all these corrections, most of them on a prefix basis. Uh, I do pre 1900s. I do uncut sheets. So there, there are different themes on which I do different collections. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not aware what is the highest denomination in coins, but what I have is 1 million. Uh, my favorite note is the Hungarian notes, which is the higher denomination notes. Yes, uh, you need to do that. Uh, I'm working on it, but as you are aware, to make a bigger book or a bigger edition, it you need a lot of time, and that is something which I'm lacking for the time being. But I'm working on it. Uh, not sure. Depends now when the lockdown opens, when the situation allows, where an exhibition is allowed. And that is when we'll plan to do something. My higher denomination note is from Hungary. That is 10 raised to 20 pangos. No, not that I am aware of. No, I don't do bundles. I just have bank notes, which I do have Venezuela bank note of an higher denomination. Um, Yes, I do agree. It is very difficult to put it into various albums and all. So basically, each notes I put it into a plastic uh, uh, cover and it is stacked up into either boxes or, or folders, which are special folders, which I got. And that is how I am maintaining these uh, notes. Today, I think the highest denomination note is 500,000. No, it would, if I'm not mistaken, it is 500,000. But I'm not sure. I need to check with the Turkey. Turkey may be having higher denomination notes still in circulation, but I need to check. Which coins you mean to say, Nikhil? I will plan to do, I may take a rerun on this book itself because there are people who want those books. So I'll take a rerun on this book and I'm already planning for making a much detailed version of the next book. No, I don't have any website to put up my collection yet. Yes, yeah, that's an overprint note. I think most of the questions are answered. Thank you for all your questions and thank you for attending this presentation by me. I hope I have been able to give you some information and a little knowledge on this collection of mine. I thank you very much. And I also thank THC to give me an opportunity to give this presentation. Thank you very much.
we will keep you informed of any future presentation of such which i would do i will definitely keep all of you posted on it